Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing and room acoustics. As you can tell right away, I've got a little uh, something in my throat here, allergies, something, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, just bear with me today as I talk about why you should not angle your studio walls. So this is a very controversial topic. Uh, I'm sure I will get a lot of comments saying you have no idea what you're talking about, but my goal is to hopefully convince you that I do know what I'm talking about and there's a lot of science behind what I'm about to teach you all. So if you're interested in hearing another side of the opinion that's out there about angling studio walls, stick around. Before we jump in, I do have a resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide checklist. You can download that at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, let's jump into this lesson on do not angle your studio walls. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say is that it will not fix the modal issues in your room. So a lot of people think that by angling the walls, it'll make the room sound better. And I'm here to convince you that a lot of that actually is not true. In fact, it might make your room sound worse. So first let's talk about what are room modes. So a room mode is essentially a frequency buildup or a frequency decrease in your room based on low frequencies bouncing around your room and creating pressure decreases or increases in the room. So what this is, means basically, it's, it's usually a problem with low frequencies, uh, 100 hertz and below, and, and in the mid-range a little bit. Um, anything above about 1,000 uh, hertz is going to be easily treated with acoustic treatment. It's really these mid to low frequencies that we're worried about in our room that are harder to treat, and splaying your walls will not help with that. So this is important because when you have a room, you can design it so that it will have less of these problems in the low frequency range. And the way to solve this is by creating a room using a room ratio that has been figured out by some of the greatest acousticians um, of our time who have come up with room ratios that work with rectangular rooms only. So the moment you splay a wall, you no longer can use a room ratio. You're just going off of the field, meaning once you've splayed your walls, you're going to have to test your room, figure out where those room modes are, and acoustically treat them. You may have more problems in the low frequency range than if you had kept your rectangular room to start with. Some of the main room ratios you can use are from the respected acousticians of Loudon, Sepmeyer, Volkman, and Bonner. All these acousticians have room ratios that will get your room closer to where the low modal frequencies are gonna be smoother than if you angled your walls. The second big thing I wanna talk about with angling your walls in a recording studio is that you're going to lose space. And this may be the number one reason not to angle your walls. The one thing that angling your walls will do is potentially help with flutter echo. Now flutter echo is that pinging sound you hear when you clap your hands in a room and it's not ideal for recording. It's super annoying in fact. But the good news is that you can easily acoustically treat flutter echo using regular acoustic panels that are actually really cheap to build and if you know where to place them you can reduce the bouncing back and forth between two parallel walls. Now if you angle that wall you can potentially reduce flutter echo as well, but you need to angle it at a specific amount in order to do it. If you angle it too little, you're gonna lose space and you're not gonna get the acoustical benefits of angling that wall. So if you're dead set on angling your studio walls, this is what you have to do. According to the Master Handbook of Acoustics, which is one of the most well-respected books on acoustics out there, you need to angle your walls at least one foot per every 20 feet or one foot per every 10 feet. So somewhere in that range. Now, some of you are probably going nuts. You're just like, Wilson, I've seen so many studios that have angled walls. How could this be possible? And the answer is that you may be seeing just the acoustic shell. So when you design a professional level recording studio, 
you can build the soundproof shell in a rectangle using a room ratio that will help with low frequency response in the room, meaning those low frequencies will go through any wall. Um, so if you angle a wall, uh, the low frequencies will still go through that angled wall and they'll hit your soundproof rectangular room. So for example, in a control room, it's a common idea that you can build the rectangular room using the correct room ratios, getting the correct volume of your room. And then you could frame within that room, at the front of the room especially, uh, two angled walls to help create a reflection-free zone. Now, this is also controversial because you can accomplish the same thing without framing extra walls and still get an excellent reflection-free zone, which I've done in my own studio. So this shows you some of the design ideas that acousticians have come up with, but it still doesn't mean you should angle a full room in your studio just to get acoustic benefits because there aren't that many. So as you can tell, in conclusion, I don't recommend angling your studio walls. In my opinion, for most home studio designs, it's going to cost you more money. It's very difficult to build an angled wall. You're going to lose space. Um, if you don't know how to maximize the space behind the wall with base traps and things like that, it, it's even more of a waste of space. And hopefully you've learned in this video that it will not help with your low frequency response to your room. It will only help with flutter echo, which is also something that can be solved using very uh, budget-friendly acoustic panels. So angling a wall, in my opinion, although it may look cool and it may be done in a lot of professional studios, I would question the designer and ask, why did you have to angle that wall? What was the benefit? And uh, there might be this answer that, oh, well, it's just the way we always have done it, in which case it's good to question these things because on the internet and through our circles in the recording industry, uh, a lot of myths get perpetuated that are not necessarily scientifically uh, proven. So I hope this video has helped you understand a little bit more about the acoustics of room design and hopefully, if not dispelled, but at least made you double check your idea that every, acoust every recording studio needs to have angled walls. Again, if you are building a studio and you need to acoustically treat it, if you want to fix the flutter echo problem in your studio, download my free acoustic treatment guide at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. I look forward to seeing what you have to say in the comments, and I will see you all next week with more advice, and hopefully, hopefully, my voice will be back. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and listening on our podcast, and I will see you all later. Thank you.